Okay, so now let's move on to talk about tension and excitement. So we need to know how to go about managing tension and excitement when we teach the flying changes. And this is because the more tense our horses become or the more excited they become, the less fluid and the less correct the flying changes will be. And it's also normal for horses to get excited when you start teaching this movement. So you need to prioritise maintaining the horse's relaxation and also keeping him calm. Now, as we've said, there isn't a one size fits all when it comes to teaching flying changes. And there's lots of exercises to choose from. We've included four within this presentation and more within the exercise download that accompanies it. And by you mixing and matching the different methods and exercises, you can prevent anticipation and also promote calmness. But when you are training the flying changes, you must take care and be quite tactful in your riding so that you don't upset or annoy the horse or create any tension and confusion. Because as we said, the more tense and excited the horse becomes, the more incorrect and the less fluid the changes are likely to be. Right, so here are some extra tips to help you manage this tension and excitement and to promote more relaxation. So the first tip is that when you start teaching your horse flying changes, it's best to do it towards the end of a session. So don't take your horse out the stable and think today we're going to do flying changes and we're going to do the whole session on flying changes from start to finish. That is a recipe for disaster. Instead, work the horse as normal and say the last 10 or 15 minutes of a session, then you can begin to work on the flying changes. At this point, the horse will already be a little bit tired and therefore less likely to become tense and excited by the whole process. Now also, when you are riding the changes, here are some things that you can do after the change to help you maintain that relaxation. So one thing you could do is you could ride a circle and do a given retake. This is especially good if the horse runs away or runs forwards after the transition. By bringing the horse onto a circle, you can help you balance him and get back a good tempo. And then the given retake will just make sure that you've got the horse back in self-carriage. Now, another thing you could do is you could ride a smooth transition to halt immediately after the change. Now, the focus here is on the word smooth. So you don't want to drag the horse into halt or just put the handbrake on. Instead, it should be a smooth, balanced and uphill transition into the halt where the horse can then just stand and just process what it is that just happened. And then once you feel the horse relax into the halt, that's when you can then walk forwards, pick up canter and possibly ride another flying change. Another option is that you could ride a transition to walk and allow the horse to stretch on a long rein. Again, this works similar to the transition to halt. So you would ride a smooth transition into the walk, allow the horse to chew the reins out of your hands and to stretch and allow him to relax and to process what it is that he just done. Now, this also gives you time as a rider to think about how you performed during the flying change. So how were your aids? How was your body positioning? And how did your horse respond? And then you can make the necessary adjustments so that your next flying change is a better one. Now, importantly, if when you are riding your flying changes, the horse does get overly tense and overly excited, and it all just gets a little bit too much for him, then go back to riding simple changes. So just ride canter, walk, canter. It's very important that you learn to recognize when the horse is no longer learning. So again, if the horse becomes overly tense and excited, he can no longer be concentrating on what it is that you are asking him to do. 
and therefore the work that you are doing will just get progressively worse and the horse will just get progressively more tense. So when you've reached that point where the horse is no longer learning, the best thing to do is to just abandon the exercise. Go back to riding some simple changes, which the horse can already do well at this stage in his training, and then finish the session on a good note. You can then go back to the flying changes on another day when the horse is more relaxed.